Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Wednesday, May 9th, 1247 a.m. Mountain Time. You're looking at the statewide average temperature ranks put out by NOAA, of all people, showing amazing amounts of below average, much below average, and record cold. For April, whew, U.S. had its coldest April in more than 20 years, according to NOAA. Can you believe they're putting this out today? Everyone seems to be wondering what happened to spring and what happened to global warming. This is a narrative change. They're about to flip the script here, and this is clear evidence. Look at this headline today, folks. Everyone seems to be wondering why NOAA is telling the truth, including the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And that is today's first boom. Spring shiver last month was the USA's coldest April in more than 20 years, according to NOAA. Although most of the country is used to April showers, this year parts of the U.S. can expect April snow. If you thought it was an unusually cold last month, you were right. April 2018 was the U.S. coldest April in 21 years, a new report according to NOAA says. And for two states in the upper Midwest, Iowa and Wisconsin, it was the coldest ever. Both states shattering their previous records from 1907 by 1 1.5 degrees in an impressive crushing of the former record, according to Weather Channel meteorologist Jonathan Erdman. Now, this is a narrative change, folks. Heads up. <laughs> and unfortunately, we can clearly see what's going on here. Major flooding hits Montana. Storms moving into the heartland. Let's take a look at the Weather Ready Nation map and give you all the warnings. Here are all the green zones. Central Idaho, western Montana, northwestern Wyoming, all in flood watches and warnings. Scattered thunderstorms with damaging winds and large hail will be possible across parts of the mid-Mississippi and Ohio valleys, as well as the lower Great Lakes on Wednesday. Scattered severe hail and windstorms are possible across parts of the northeast on Thursday, or oh, Nebraska, maybe. Marginally severe storms with strong wind gusts and hail also possible on Thursday in the lower Great Lakes and Central Appalachians. Let's look at the GFS model. Looking at heavy snow in the Bitterroots. Look at that. Central Idaho. Showing 16 plus in some areas. Plus heavy snow. Uh, showing up in western Montana and northwestern Wyoming in those flood zones. We, Utah also getting some snow, but we're left out. Now the models have completely changed and Colorado is not getting any snow, if any, now, as of today, until Wednesday, May 16th and 17th. And it's just a little teensy bit. Not going to help us at all. So heads up, Four Corners, we're still in severe drought. Fire warnings, there are going to be blazes lighting up everywhere here. We're going to be covering it, unfortunately. Melbourne braces for autumn cold snap as Antarctic blast sweeps the southeast. Have you had? It's not the hottest winter ever. Melbourne weather, cold snap on the way with record low for May. Heads up, David King. Victoria will receive an icy blast of wet and windy weather over the next two days. I checked the GFS models. We're talking 6 to 12 inches in Tasmania in the mountains, and as well as the uh, southern coast, the southeastern coast of Australia. Victor, uh, bringing with it the end of the mild autumn, a cold front will sweep into Melbourne tonight, bringing rain, low temperatures, and high winds on Friday. During Thursday, very cold air moves across Victoria. We'll see a low of 8 degrees, a top of only 13. Bomb senior forecaster Michael Efren said, Sydney is expected to drop about 9 degrees on Friday to a maximum of 15C after enjoying its own burst of warm and sunny autumn weather. On Friday, a low pressure system will deepen in the east of Victoria, bringing more rain and high winds and further 10 to 25 millimeters of rain across Melbourne. The temperatures will only reach 13. Heads up. Snow's in the high country. Deadly flash floods hit East African countries already in dire need. In Kenya, Rwanda, Somalia, death tolls reached 300, which hundreds of thousands of more people displace, adding to crisis in a region stricken by drought and now flooding. At least 18 killed as floods hit and landslides hit Rwanda. 
18 people have been killed this week in Rwanda after storms triggered floods and landslides in the country's west. Some people are still missing. Totally fluxed. What do I mean? There it is. Cosmic ray flux will be increasing continuously for the rest of your lifetime, and these events are only going to get bigger and greater and stronger and longer and worse. Deadly floods and landslides hit Haiti, Dominican Republic, and Jamaica. Homes teetering on the edge of cliffs. Heavy rainfall affected the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Jamaica between the 2nd and the 7th, causing floods and landslides, leaving four people dead. Seaside homes in Norfolk evacuated over fears they could fall into the sea. There's 10 homes dropping off a cliff. Warnings for snow and ice are in place in Hemsby, meaning that homes in the area are at risk of being ripped from the cliff top. Jeez. That's crazy. Heads up. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere hits record monthly high. Oh my God. 410.31 parts per million. We're all going to burn up. Unfortunately, temperature hasn't changed on Earth for over 17 years. It's been exactly the same. It's been dropping for the last four years at an impressive rate, which is why I don't understand why a Harvard scientist would put his career on a line and claim that climate change may be worse than we think because carbon dioxide is rapidly rising. And this is the graph he's using, folks. This is the script CO2 measurement from Mauna Loa. Now, here's the problem. There has been no temperature increase on Earth since 1995. Now, if this caused temperature increase, this slow graph here going up, the CO2 going up, and then there's no temperature increase for all this CO2 going up, then someone is full of shite. <laughs> for goodness sake. Look, what CO2 is going up here, no temperature change. Now CO2 is going up here. No temperature change. When will people look at the truth? I don't know. Harvard is a, sh is a joke. A joke. I used to think Harvard was... Oh my God. What is happening to the planet? Magnitude 4.5 earthquake is the latest w warning of San Andreas's power, but just a minor, minor jolt. This is nothing to, compared to what is about to happen in California. Let's talk about earthquake rumbling under Lake Ontario this afternoon. Heads up, 2.4. This is an uptick. A 2.4 magnitude earthquake occurred under Lake Ontario at 5.27 p.m. Tuesday. The quake was 10 kilometers under the lake center, 25 miles east of Toronto, following another quake that happened under the lake last Friday that measured 1.5. It's a major uptick. We're going to be watching this area closely. Closely Now, if you don't know about the Great Lakes Tectonic Zone, I'll leave you the, leave you the wiki. You can quickly read about it. And I'll also leave you the Great Lakes Superquake. This is Prophecy by Bob Yossi uh, back in 1998. He prophesied a major earthquake ripping the North American continent in half, starting in the Great Lakes and going all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. If you don't know about it, there it is. Quakes of note, the 4.6 in California, followed by four aftershocks. Uh, nothing significant happening there that I saw on the wire. We did have a 5.5 in Kodiak, Alaska, rattling nerves. And take a look, El Salvador, 4.7, still rocking. That uh, swarm that we talked about yesterday is ongoing, and it could be the birth of a new volcano. Trying to come over here to Hawaii to check out the uh, situation here in Leilani Estates. Jed is alive, and he has messaged us all as well there. They're uh, evacuating people in the southern portion of Leilani Estates, uh, Lana Puna Gardens is now being evacuated because of some sort of activity happening there. There's 14 confirmed fissures, according to Jake or Jed Hussein, the guy with that amazing footage uh, the other night. And there is still major activity here at the vent that is venting on the side flank of Kilauea and has been for a while and other volcanic regions and offshore. 
So this is far from over, folks. Days, weeks, years, scientists say Hawaii's erupting volcano has no end in sight. I'll leave you links to this article coming out at 10.25 p.m. updated just hours ago. The eruption at Hawaii's Kilauea volcano continues. The lava has now destroyed at least 35 structures and covered the equivalent of 75 football fields. Scientists have been tracking the event since it started, but there is still a big unanswered question, the biggest of which is when will it end? Now, the Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's Big Island has been erupting for more than 30 years. Lava levels in Pu'a'a Crater and the volcano's summit rose in recent weeks, says Wendy Stovall, but has fallen off. If you go over to the volcano YT, you can see it for yourself. It has dropped considerably. And where is that lava going? It is going to the south and off the flank and coming out of the ground at Leilani Estates and other areas in the south. Now, these areas are inflating like a balloon because magma was getting backed up from below, Leilani Estate specifically, and last week the magma pu'ao plummeted. The whole bottom of the crater floor dropped out and the magma completely drained away from that system. Scientists don't know what started the latest event, but there are two possibilities. Either there's an increase in magma supply or something blocked the system. Something blocked the pathway of the system. In other words, suddenly more molten rock shot up from deep inside the earth or there was a clog. Whatever the cause, the pressurized magma had to go somewhere and it turned away from the crater, heading underground, flowing into spaces between rocks along what is known as the East Rift Zone. Now that set series of earthquakes, including the 6.9 magnitude trembler that hit on Friday and could be felt across the island. Stovall said that by tracking the earthquakes and deformation in the ground, they could see the direction the magma was heading. Honestly, it was pretty frightening to see where the magma was going. That's because it was headed towards a lush residential area, Leilani Estates, where more than 1,700 people were ordered to evacuate. And roads are damaged and people are not going back there. So if you want more information on this ongoing event, I'll leave you links to this article. Real quick, let's talk about farm labor drought. There are no more Mexicans. They have all gone south to Mexico. And a lot of California farmers are now moving their crops to Mexico. So if the borders go up and food shortages happen, we are now outsourcing our remaining food, the only food that's grown that we can eat, vegetables from California into a different country. <laughs> Milk sickness. This is something you need to know about to survive and thrive in the future. This is uh, was known about in other grand solar minimums, including the adult minimum, has to do with homesteading and raising cattle, animal husbandry, and it will kill you. Certain animals can will eat uh, certain plants. Around here, we have loco weed. If your horse eats that, you got to kill him. Now, in this instance, uh, we're talking about white snake root. If you just right-click on this, you can open it up in a new tab, and you can get the information on white snake root if you don't know how to do that. Adratina altissima. There it is. Boom. Any of these dots. Contains the poison trematol. Open the link in a new tab. Right click on it. There it is. Trematone. There's the poison. So milk sickness comes from animals eating white snake root, which contains the poison trematol. It causes trembles and death in humans. Although very rare today, milk sickness claimed thousands of lives among migrants in the Midwest in the early 19th century in the United States because they had no idea what was going on. I just told you what's going on, so get the facts, especially in frontier areas along the Ohio River Valley and its tributaries where white snake root is prevalent. Now, if you know where white snake root is, you got to eradicate it if you're going to raise animals in the area. Nancy Hanks Lincoln, the mother of Abraham Lincoln, died from drinking milk from a contaminated animal that ate white snake root. I'll leave you links to that. It's quite interesting. Sent in from a subscriber. Quick uptick. The coronal hole here is still creating perturbations in space weather. The solar wind speed is still elevated and spiking above 1100. The plasma density has recently increased. There is uh, a good, the KP is still riding at three and may go back up to instability at four momentarily. And there is 
Aurora watch potential in all of the Canadian provinces in the north and even in the central regions here in Ontario. So uh, good watching opportunities also in Australia, 50% probability in those regions. Let's talk about some solutions going off grid. Don't make the same battery mistakes that this guy did. It's talking about how to wire your batteries in series or parallel. If you don't know what that is or you think you know, I suggest you read this article. It will really open your eyes in a simple context on how that works and what it means for you. And wholesale solar is where we got our equipment from, so that's a boom. Guys, the jig is up. <laughs> that's all I can say. It's been a long day. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe, everyone.